Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Shen, and would like to share with you our latest work on document summarization. We built Malta Alexa. It is a dataset with real-world summaries for civil rights lawsuits. This is joint work between MIT, Allen Institute for AI, Civil Rights Litigation Clearinghouse, and the University of Michigan. Before we dive into the details, I want to start with a quick summary of Malta Alexa. It is an abstractive summarization dataset with three key features. It has a real-world summarization task, and there are 9,200 of summaries for 4,500 U.S. civil rights lawsuits. All the summaries are manually written by legal experts. There are more than 500 experts contributed to the writing for the last 10 more years. For each case, there are three summaries, multi-paragraph, single paragraph, or TLDR summaries of different granularities. Okay, I guess you are a bit curious and want to learn more about Mount Alexa. Here is the outline of our talk, and let's jump to the motivation first. For civil rights lawsuits in the U.S., typically, multiple documents will be filed in court, including docket, complaints, opinions, settlement agreement, and many others. These documents are typically very long and can sum up to hundreds of pages. It would be very helpful if we can have an executive summary of the case, just like this one. There are usually 300 words, and it's way easier to read these summaries compared to read all the source documents. This summary shown here is one example of all the real-world summaries hosted on the Civil Rights Litigation Clearinghouse website. It collects case metadata and summaries for several lawsuits in the U.S., and currently it serves lawyers and attorneys in the U.S. Unsurprisingly, it is extremely time-consuming to create such summaries. Typically, there are more than 200 pages or 75,000 words from the case documents, which might take 1 to 10 hours for a legal expert or law school students to read and write the corresponding summary. As such, we work together to develop this multi lexum dataset to support both legal practitioners and LP researchers. We hope this dataset can support developing semi-automated legal case summarizers. This can be extremely helpful for both attorneys who want to quickly review lawsuits or the general public who want to learn more about certain lawsuits. More broadly, it can help the free law projects that can post information about hundreds of thousands of lawsuits. On the other side, this dataset is also a challenging benchmark for LP researchers. It is a real-world summarization task, and it contains real summaries. The input context is extremely long, and we might need to perform controlled summarization, for example, controlling the summarization length or detailness. So, how is Smart Alexum created? The summary writer will firstly see a set of case documents, including buckets, motions, complaints, and etc. They will carefully read through them, take notes, and capture details according to a pre-specified checklist. After reading, they will start compiling the long summaries. It usually contains multiple paragraphs, and on average, there are 650 words. The goal of a long summary is to capture all major events that happened during a case, like when the plaintiff filed the complaints and when the judge issued an opinion. Based on the long summary, the writer will further write a single paragraph short summary, keeping only the most important information like major entities involved, the reason for the lawsuit, and the outcome. Finally, Sometimes, they may also write a TLDR-like tiny summary that contains one or two sentences. It is usually used for tweeting about a lawsuit. During the writing, the writers are provided a set of writing guidelines that specify what to include in the summaries and the style of the writing. Each summary will also be reviewed by another experienced writer to ensure quality and correctness. Here, we show one exemplar summary in our dataset we can highlight how the summary writers organize important content, like the description of plaintiff and defendants, and statutory basis for the case. All the summaries in Mount Alexa are written by legal experts, including legal scholars, attorneys, and students from UMich, 
and civilized clean house. In fact, it takes more than 10 years for 500 more legal experts to contribute to the writing. Here are their names and really appreciate their efforts for the writing. The careful writing process leads to many unique features of multi-lexum. For example, it contains expert author summaries that are manually written following the guidelines. There are summaries of three different granularities for a case. The source documents are very long, with more than 75,000 words. And the long summaries are also lengthy. Typically, there are more than 600 words in each case. With all the unique features, multi-lexum is very different from existing abstractive summarization datasets. Let's start with comparing single doc summarization datasets. For example, here are the common datasets like Exum, CN Daily Mail, Newsroom for news summaries, Big Patent for patent summary, and Biosum for legislative bill summaries. We also have SciTLDR for paper summaries and Booksum for literature summaries. We can present all the datasets in a tabular format. And firstly, we can find that most of the datasets are created by automatically extracting the online text. And only summaries in Multilexum, Biosum, and SciTLDR are manually written by experts. Moreover, Multilexum is the only dataset that provides multi-granularity summaries. And of course, in terms of the context and summary lengths, Multilexum is particularly long. While Booksum also has long context and summary, there are only 400 total samples. It comes from the literature domain and the summaries also very different. For multi-document summarization datasets, like multi-news, multi-exercise, and ms squared, the comparison result is very similar. Finally, I would like to share some interesting experiments and human evaluation with multi-lexum. The rich document set of multi-lexum allows us to design unique experiments and test the capabilities of existing models. Here, we have a list of source documents and the corresponding long, short, and tiny case summaries. We can experiment with a novel task, progressive summarization. For example, given the source document, we experiment with generating the long summary first, and then the short summary, and finally, tiny summaries subsequently. Here, we show the results for summarizing from source to long and then to short. Given the short summary as a target, model outputs get significantly better when we switch the input from source documents to the long summary. While we find to the same bar model, the root 2 score gets almost 80% better. The intermediate summary indeed helps the model performance. We also try to fuse the long summary and the source document as a model input. However, we do not observe apparent improvements in the scores. Here, we report the best model scores based on a different method called Primera. We hypothesize that the additional input text causes confusion and reduces the accuracy of the final summary. Finally, in the previous experiments, we will use ground truth long summaries in the input. However, in a real-world scenario, we might only have imperfect long summaries generated by bar model. How about that? If we use that, we see a huge decrease in the accuracy. The inaccurate long summary provides confounding information that potentially leads to the bad accuracy of the final output. Another interesting experiment is multi-granularity summarization. Given input, we want to generate summaries of different granularities using one single model. More specifically, given the source document, want to build a single model to generate the long, short, and tiny summaries at once, which we call multi-granularity training. We can use different prompts, like summary long, short, or tiny, to control the lens, and we fine-tune the same bar model with pre-trained weights on the CN Daily Mail dataset. Here we show the results. When the model can only generate summaries of a certain lens, we call it single task training. To our surprise, we find that multi-granularity training leads to significant improvements to the long or short tiny summary generation. 
there's a consistent 10% plus improvements to all root metrics for long and tiny summary generation. We hypothesized that the multi granularity training can be considered as a special case of curriculum learning. Generating long and tiny summaries is relatively harder than shorter summaries, and the inclusion of short summary in the training makes it easier for models to learn to generate summaries of other lengths. We also try with a typical multi document summarization task. Given a list of source documents, we want to synthesize the corresponding long, short, and tiny summaries separately. We test four different models. Bexis and BART are two commonly used transformer based summarization methods, and they can take input context of 1024 tokens at most. LED stands for Long Former Encoder and Decoder. It is based on Longformer and it can encode content up to 16K tokens. Vermera introduces a new pre training method for multi document summarization and improves the performance based on LED. Public weights are trained to encode up to 4K tokens. And in this table, we report root 2 and prediction lengths for the three tasks. The first observation is that longer input context constantly leads to better performance across different tasks. The LED 16K model achieved 5% to almost 20% more root 2 scores compared to the best model with 1000 input lengths. By comparing Primera and LED results, despite the shorter context lengths, Primera achieves way better performance compared to the LED model, even with three times more input tokens. It shows that task specific training can lead to better model outputs. Another important finding is that the models tend to generate shorter outputs, especially when the summaries are longer. For example, BART can only generate about half of the length for long summaries. Additionally, we conduct a set of human evaluation of machine generated summaries. We design an evaluation demo based on the initial feedback from legal experts. We find that end to end summarization model hallucinates a lot. For example, here is the generic summary. Even though it seems super fun to me, after showing it to the legal experts, they highlight a lot of factually incorrect and unsupported text in the generation. For example, the decree here should be three years instead of two. This makes it extremely hard to use, according to the lawyers. The experts also mentioned that the models are not good at legal reasoning. In this example here, in the source document, it provides a reasoning about why defendants wants to dismiss the case. However, the model says it's the plaintiff who filed the motion to dismiss the case. If we take a closer look at the source text, it mentions the plaintiff multiple times, but the sentences are negative. The model fails to capture the reasoning behind but just generates the plaintiff word regardless. Based on the feedback, we design a surrogate system based on the following features. Firstly, the model will have shorter generation targets. It will generate each paragraph in the summary separately. Also, it will allow users to input salient text from the source document to make the generation easier. And the design is based on their real workflow to make sure the demo is easy to learn and simulates the writer's real needs. There are four components in the system. Firstly, we display all docket entries in a tabular format, each denoting the overview of a source document. The writers will scan through the rows and check the box when the referred document is relevant. Based on the selected documents and overview, the writer can create an outline of the summary. Each column in this view denotes a paragraph in the summary and here at arrow 1 show the gist of the first paragraph. All relevant source documents for this paragraph are displayed here in the same column, like arrow 2 here. Next, the writer will take a deep dive into the source documents. They can input whatever important text from the source document in this part at arrow 2. The overview of the selected documents from the previous view will also be displayed as arrow 1 for reference. Finally, given the inputs in the previous view, we run two models, BART and distilled BART, to generate two different summaries. 
Users can choose between them at error 1, and then they can give their ratings for the best selected summary in this region at error 2. They can further edit the generated summary at error 3, which will be saved as the final summary of this paragraph. We collect the writings for roughly 200 paragraphs, and here we show the results. Firstly, the average user ratings is only 0.43, indicating experts still find the machine generated summaries not so helpful. We also check how the writers change the summaries. On average, they change 87 words or 76% of the generated paragraph, and typically they extend the generation length by 65%. We find that compute some automatic metric between the user edited and the model generated version. The root scores are still low and similar to what we found in the previous experiments. We conclude that existing models are still far from solving this task, and better methods should be developed to tackle issues like hallucination and under generation. To summarize, model exam is a real world task for summarizing legal documents. It contains expert written summaries of three different granularities. You can easily try with model exam using hugging face datasets. And please take a look at our project website and reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much.